Okay, so here we are at our next video. I'm calling this one Categories of Waves because there are two categories, two kinds of waves. The first is called transverse and the other is called longitudinal. Now, they're defined by the way that they move as compared to the, the way that they travel. So, let me say that again. The way that they oscillate, the direction of their oscillation, as compared to the direction that they are moving. So let's see what that looks like here, practically speaking. Uh, well, here we have a kid, or a young person, who has a rope, and the rope is tied to a tree. Uh, it's a little odd, but you know this, this kind of thing can happen. Um, and then the, the kid starts shaking the rope up and down, right? So all he's doing is moving the rope up and down. That disturbance then travels along the, along the length of the rope and forms these waves. It's basically a sine wave. Um, so he's shaking the rope up and down, so the direction of oscillation is up and down, but the direction of travel is that way. So the direction of oscillation up and down is perpendicular to the direction of travel. Bam. So that is what we call a transverse wave. So it oscillates perpendicular to its direction of travel. An example would be, like we see here, a, a wave um, in a rope, a sh shaking a rope back and forth. Another example would be waves on the surface of water, like this one here. So that wave, it's a large wave in a wave pool at an amusement park, and obviously its direction of oscillation is up and down, but its direction of travel is perpendicular to that sideways, coming directly at us in this picture. All right, so what, what then is an example of a longitudinal wave? Well, sound is a longitudinal wave, and slinkies can be used to produce longitudinal waves as well. That's pretty much it. When you make a longitudinal wave in a slinky, this is what it looks like. There are parts that are squished and parts that are spread out. So the wave is moving this way, right? It's also oscillating this way. So it oscillates kind of like whoosh, 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 whoosh. If we looked at any particle in here, any particular spring in this thing, the spring would go somewhat that way, somewhat this way, somewhat that way, somewhat this way. It would have a rest position that it's sitting in normally, but the actual spring will oscillate back and forth this direction, which is parallel, parallel to the direction of travel. So that is why it's called longitudinal. So those are two examples. Let's look at them in more detail. All right, so here we have it written out in words, a transverse wave oscillates perpendicular to the direction of travel, as we saw in the previous slide. This, this uh, young person who is shaking this rope up and down, right? It produces a transverse wave that travels that direction and oscillates up and down. Um, in the case of a slinky, if somebody sits over here on the floor and pushes the slinky back and forth, like that, towards their body, away from their body, towards their body, away from their body, then the wave travels this direction and it also oscillates that direction. So it's oscillating parallel the same way that it's traveling, the same direction that it's traveling. So it kind of whoosh, 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 kind of like that is what the wave looks like. It's not actually moving back and forth like this, the actual wave, but the particles in the, in the medium or the, the coils in the slinky move like this. The wave moves like that. So that's why it's called longitudinal. Um, the parts where the wave is compressed or really close together, where the springs are really close together, that's called a compression. And then the parts where the springs of the slinky are really spread out, that's called a rarefaction. All right, so those are terms you need to know. Compression and rarefaction. All right. The compression is kind of like the crest, crest of the wave, so to speak. And then the rarefaction is kind of like the trough. But keep in mind, there aren't actually crests and troughs in a longitudinal wave. There are places where the medium is really bunched up, and there's places where the medium is really spread out. In this case, the medium 
is the slinky springs. The medium might also be air. It might be air molecules if it's a sound wave. It would, a sound wave would look a lot like this if you could picture it. Um, but instead of sprinky, slinky springs, it would be air molecules. And here the air molecules would be more spread out, and here they would be more, more closely packed, more tightly packed together. Anyway, uh, that's that. So moving on. All right, I just put together a chart here to summarize what we've been talking about. So these are some examples of each kind of a wave. Transverse, light in your house, microwave that cooks your food, radio or TV broadcast waves, ocean waves, shaking a rope up and down, all those are transverse waves, and much more. Longitudinal waves would be like pushing and pulling a slinky, music on your mp3 player, emergency sirens, any other sounds, and there are certain types of earthquake waves that are longitudinal in nature. There are other earthquake waves that are transverse. So there are several different kinds of earthquake waves. We're not going to really talk about that in physics. I just put this here to fill a fifth spot, honestly, in the chart. So really there's only two kinds of longitudinal waves that we're going to concern ourselves with. Um, this one, bam, and then all of these are sound. So slinky waves and sounds, that's pretty much it. That's all we're going to concern ourselves with in terms of longitudinal waves. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.